Hey everybody, and welcome to another Inner Circle Mother. This is now part two of my phaser rifle build. Alright, welcome back everybody. Last I left off, I was gluing these two halves together. The uh, adhesive that I used for that is this stuff here by JB Weld. It's a two-part epoxy. You basically just use this applicator to... Uh, um, put the stuff onto a disposable surface, you mix it up, and then you apply it to the item that you're gluing. The stuff is kind of uh, gooey and it does run a bit, and when I was scooping it into these areas here, um, some of it dripped onto the side of the rifle. So I had to wipe that stuff off, but had to sand it and reapply the primer. So if you're going to use this sort of stuff, just be aware that does happen and you may want to just mask these areas off. Uh, that way if it drips onto the surface, it's not a big deal. The other thing was uh, there were some gaps along here because it wasn't an, uh, a perfect fit. So I was able to use plastic putty to uh, fill those areas in. I just applied the stuff along the uh, uh, area here and used a wet Q-tip and it filled in quite nicely and I primed that over as well. Now one other thing that you can do to add some extra support uh, is to uh, uh, place a rod in between the two halves here. Uh, that was suggested to me and I did attempt that. However, I could not get the holes to line up properly uh, so I decided to dispense with that idea. Um, I'm confident it's going to hold together because it does interlock like a jigsaw piece here and there's a lot of support there so uh, the uh, epoxy dried nice and solid so it's, it's a very solid fit so I'm confident it's going to hold together pretty well. Alright, next up now is the lighting so let me just go ahead and show you what I have in mind for that. Alright, so here I have a schematic for you. Uh, this represents the upper housing here and the first thing is to uh, install a headlamp. So this shines forward, of course, and in order to do that, I am utilizing this uh, reflector that I found from a flashlight, an old flashlight I had on hand here, and it fits perfectly for this project. So uh, I just mounted a five millimeter cool white LED, and that's gonna mount into this piece, which comes with the kit, and that'll fit um, in this section here. We have a open section here, or at least an orange piece that's going to fit over this way here. And um, so I want just a, uh, you know, I don't want a, a major spotlight there. I just want it to glow. And so I'm going to be utilizing some chip size or nano size uh, SMDs for that. So in order to hold them in place, I'm just going to cut a piece of styrene plastic that will run from here to here and we'll mount the um, two nano size SMDs there. Also going to create a styrene piece that will fit back here to mount an SMD light, which I'm going to be using here. Uh, that's going to shine out this way for the site. And uh, then we have these three LEDs that come in from the side of the rifle. Now I first had in mind to use chip size SMDs for this, uh, but the opening is just too large for that. Uh, it turns out that these openings will accommodate a 3 millimeter LED. So I'm still waiting for these to get in, but I ordered them from Model Train Software uh, with the resistors separately. Now when they come pre-wired, the resistors are placed right next to the lamp, and that makes it a bit too wide to get through these openings. So uh, I'm just ordering the resistors separately so we can feed the wires through, thread it up here, and then we will mount the resistors um, over this way. Those will be all wired together, and then uh, a light switch will be placed here and uh, then this will all run to our power source, which of course is in this back section here. I'm gonna create a little box here that we'll be able to mount our uh, nine volt battery into. And then this piece will screw on with uh, actual screws here. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, this also accommodates a uh, uh, restraining strap or a support strap that feeds from here all the way forward here and um, so I'm going to be mounting that in this as well. Alright so that is the plan. So let's go ahead and move forward. As I said I'm still waiting for these but at least we can get started on painting this and uh, mounting some of the other lights inside. Starting with the headlamp I decided to take this piece and mount it to uh, this additional piece here. This is a piece of styrene I cut with the proper dimensions to fit in here. Uh, the goal is to add a bit more stability and um, also as we place it in here it will give us the ability to light block uh, up above here and along the sides. 
because uh, remember we're putting lights here and in the back so as the light is shining through the front we don't want any light leakage through the top and the sides. The other thing I decided to do was to make a uh, lens for the headlamp. I noticed even with some of the props that I've seen they didn't have any lens there which I think is unusual. So I just cut one out of clear styrene, it'll fit in there. And then we have our light fixture that I showed you just a second ago that'll fit right behind it. And just doing a test here with the light, you can see now our light is mounted into our fixture and it's providing a nice bright illumination. All right, well now that the headlamp is done, uh, we have to mount the lights now for this section and towards the rear sight. And uh, I know I've mentioned this in the past, but one of the funnest things I find with these types of projects is there are no instructions, so you have to come up with ways to do things. In this case, I have to devise a way to mount these lights. So all I'm doing here is I'm just taking thin pieces of styrene plastic and fitting them into each of these areas here. I'm going to go ahead and mount the SMDs on each of these sheets here so that they shine in their uh, respective areas. Well, for the rear, the uh, lights were two pinpoints, and remember, this is our sight here, so I tried to fog it over by sanding it lightly, but uh, that wasn't enough, so I decided to cover the lights with this white styrene piece here, and let's just see what that looks like now. Well, I like what I'm seeing here at the top. Uh, I am going to have to frost this over, though, to get this effect, uh, but... Uh, still getting some pinpoints here. I should have realized that with the plastic butted up right up against the SMDs, we're still going to get those two pinpoints of light. So I think the way to go would be to mount yet another piece of styrene here, like this. And then we will put our target over that, and that way we get this nice soft glow. And that's the effect I'm looking for. Okay, so for this orange piece, we're supposed to be able to heat it. I tried hot water, but that's not working, so I'm going to go ahead and just apply a little heat here and see what happens. Well, unfortunately, the piece ended up cracking. Uh, it was difficult to get even heat along the sides. You can see it was already warping, and eventually this side just cracked. So I'm going to go ahead and do away with that, and I'm uh, going to make my own piece. So what I'm doing now is cutting out the piece for this top section. There's a plastics store uh, in San Diego that um, sells all kinds of stuff plastic, and one of the things they sell are sheet clear styrene plastic and I had they had some scraps of the right thickness that I was looking for so I just bought a piece and all I'm doing is uh, cutting out the shape that I need to and um, trying to get real close just sanding it I've got two of the pieces already done so all I'm doing here is just uh, using an exacto knife to cut out the piece and hopefully this will be the final side all right well it took a little time but I got it so uh, this now is the piece that's going to go here. I'm going to go ahead and paint that orange. Well, as you can see, the orange piece turned out pretty well. Um, what I did was I took 1500 grit sandpaper and uh, hazed it over. And then I applied a mixture of international orange and chrome yellow. Uh, those are testers paints. Probably a 70 to 30 mixture yellow and orange. And uh, applied it to both sides with my airbrush. I uh, just applied some light coats there. And you can see it turned out quite nice. Uh, so I think it's actually going to look better than the original piece that was included with the kit here. And started the painting process now. I have the black areas masked off and I'm using this silver metallic color by Rust-Oleum. Now that the uh, main body has been painted silver, I'm now masking off some of the darker areas and painting these uh, little panels here on the side. And this is how it came out. I need to do a few touch-ups here along the black, but for the most part I think it came out pretty well. Well, I've moved on to lighting now, and it turns out that the 1.8 millimeter LED is a better choice versus a 3 millimeter. Uh, I just didn't drill the hole all the way through wide enough to accommodate 3 millimeter. Luckily, I had these 1.8 millimeters. All right, so here we're going to have the three 1.8 millimeter lights in place, and I have to uh, cut out a piece of clear styrene and paint it red uh, with Tamiya's clear red to cover over this area here. And uh, you can see the wires here now are in place and ready to be hooked in with everything else. All right, so I've added now the lights to the rear section of this housing, and I decided to add 
another piece of thin styrene over these lights just so that we can make the illumination more diffuse. All right, so getting ready now to uh, install the main headlamp. Uh, you can see I created this little lens here out of uh, some styrene plastic and I've glued it into place. Uh, to avoid any clouding, uh, I decided to use some thin styrene on each side that I could uh, super glue into place and then we'd be able to glue our lens onto those plastic pieces just using regular plastic cement. All right, this is going to then slide back here. And I'll glue that into place and um, try and do some light blocking back here with some tulip paint. All right, well, as for the switch, I'm going to place it on the side here. I use my Dremel to cut out an opening here, a little notch for it. Um, and the switch is available on modeltrainsoftware.com. It's just a little slide switch here. And hopefully it won't be too conspicuous. All right, and this is the bottom piece uh, for this housing. And uh, I had to create an opening here for our switch, so I just did that by using a small drill bit and a Dremel. Drilled a couple holes, trimmed the rest with an exact knife, and then just used files uh, to make the edges nice and straight. It accommodates our switch pretty well here, and uh, you can see it lines up with our notch, so there's no interference with it uh, being able to glue against the housing. All right, the other thing I need to do is to create a clear piece that goes over these lights here, and um, I'm trying to fashion that out of some clear styrene, of course. Uh, it's not the easiest thing to do. I kept cracking it, but I finally got a piece that's going to fit here. I just have to grind down this one edge here uh, to give us this angled side, and I'm just going to use my Dremel tool with a little grinding stone here. All right, almost done here. I'm just going to take a file and smooth out the bottom edge a little bit more, and then I'm going to use Tamiya's clear red. All right, you can tell we're very close to completion now. I have the base hooked to the rifle. I have our light switch in place. We've got our wires all ready to be hooked together. Waiting on this final piece to dry, and I'll glue that into place. And then everything is all set for the battery. You can see I've constructed a little compartment here to hold the battery, and our hookup is right here. All right, before I do the final reveal, I just want to show you how I mounted the strap to the rear plate here. I just used a couple screws. I also, in addition, used uh, some super glue underneath the strap, and then I applied some hot glue over it. All right, let's go ahead and show you the completed rifle. All right, and here we now have the completed rifle. Again, this is a replica of the Phaser Type 3A rifle from Star Trek First Contact. This is a one-to-one -one replica and measures about 33 inches from front to back. So as I mentioned in the first video, I purchased this kit off of eBay. A guy named John sells it. And uh, he also sells other replicas of Star Trek weapons and uh, I believe some other movies and TV shows. Uh, but I looked at reference pictures online and saw that the detailing seemed very close and I got in touch with him. Luckily he lives up in the Long Beach area and I happened to be driving through that area not long ago so I was able to avoid some shipping charges there. But real nice guy. Uh, he assured me that the kit uh, was molded from an actual studio prop. As you know, throughout the years we've seen different variations of the Phaser Rifle. My favorite of all time is the one from the original series. In the next generation we saw one that looked like the extension of the hand phaser. And in the movies we saw a few different versions. The one that we have here is, again, one of the versions we saw in Star Trek First Contact. The other one is what you see here. And as you can see, the muzzle has a different configuration, but it still has the housing here for the headlamp and the sight. We saw one more version here that you see from Star Trek Nemesis in which they modified the sight a bit further, but the body of the rifle is very similar to the one that we have here. Okay, so it's time to go ahead and turn on the lights. Let me go ahead and flip the switch which I have concealed under here. The lights look pretty good. In uh, person, they're not quite as washed out. Of course, the video camera is going to wash them out a bit. Uh, the lighting here works really well. I'm very happy with the way they look. Uh, again, they look very bright in the video, but uh, it's a lot more subtle uh, in person. Uh, using 1.8 millimeter uh, LEDs there, and uh, they're covered by this piece that I uh, configured to fit over it, which is uh, just basically this clear styrene that I colored with Tamiya Red. There is a little light leakage around here. Uh, as you know, I had to make my own piece here. Uh, the other one broke, and um, so it's not quite form-fitted along the edges, so a little light leakage there. I'm not really going to do anything with it because I'm just afraid I'm going to mess up the orange piece that I created, so I'm going to leave that as is. Also very happy with the soft glow I was able to achieve here, again just utilizing some extra styrene plastic to diffuse that light, so it works real well with the upper piece and the sight. One thing I might try to do later is to create a decal because the sight 
on the original studio model uh, is actually colored red, has a sort of uh, crosshair, just like we see in the plastic piece here, but it's a crosshair with a circle around it. Uh, so I may attempt that later. Also very happy with the headlamp, uh, again utilizing a 5mm LED. Uh, it's a cool white LED that uh, was housed there with the pieces that came with the kit. Um, also the lens piece looks pretty good, so I'm happy with the way that turned out as well. And this is the opposite side of the rifle. Also had to make these pieces here, again just cut out of styrene plastic. Uh, used the clear styrene here and just colored it white and uh, used my uh, scribing tool to create these vertical lines that you see. One thing that's really cool is that the headlamp does work to create a spotlight ahead of the rifle here. And also it's really nice that the uh, kit was configured to have an open area here uh, both to uh, house this uh, support strap that you have here uh, as well as uh, an area to put the battery. You can see if you peek through here, you can see there's the battery compartment there. I should probably paint that black so it's not as visible. One other thing I decided to do was to change the color I was using for the body of the rifle. As you know, I was starting out with Rust-Oleum's Silver Metallic, but the more I looked at it, the more I thought it looked too shiny and too glittery. So I decided to instead switch it to the paint Mica Silver by Tamiya and I'm much happier with the choice. One quick word about the base, uh, you know I did have a version of this rifle in my collection earlier that I purchased off of eBay. It wasn't quite 100% correct and when I came across this kit I thought it'd be an opportunity to finally have a more accurate representation in my collection so I opted to buy it. Uh, the stand was just created using wood and uh, the, the center piece was carved out to accommodate the uh, bottom part of the rifle there and then the plaque I just purchased off of uh, a, a website online, I don't remember, I got it quite a few years ago, but it just says Star Trek First Contact uh, Type 3 Phaser Rifle. Alright, so there you have it. I think it does create a pretty decent replica of the Phaser Rifle. Uh, again, just looking at reference pictures, uh, it does look very close. A lot of the moldings and markings are, are the same. I really don't see uh, much difference there. So I think you'd be happy with uh, the final outcome. Uh, working with resin is a challenge, of course. You know, a lot of it depends on the uh, quality of the resin and, and how it turned out in the mold and so forth so you will have to of course devote time to address a lot of those surface defects sanding and putting certainly not my favorite thing to do uh, and um, in the end there's still some surface defects I wish weren't there but uh, overall I'm happy with the way it turned out. I did mention uh, to John some of the challenges that I did have I, I did get a little bit frustrated with the fact that some of the surface was peeling off and chipping off and um, so he assured me he is working to solve that issue. So that's something you want to ask him about uh, if you do purchase this kit from him. All right, well, uh, if you have any questions, of course, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at InnerShuttleModeler at gmail.com. As always, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you then in the next video. Take care.